everyone and welcome to my five Christmas lighting ideas. This is all made with items I bought from either thrift stores or from charity shops or street markets, brocantes. So it's not the sort of thing that you may be able to get identical to what I got, but I'm sure you'll get something very similar. And my top tip is to make sure you buy in your Christmas bits and pieces well into the summer don't wait until christmas because prices fly up then so when you're out and about people want to get rid of their christmas bits and pieces and you just buy them up at a bargain price right let's get stuck right into our first project for this craft i'm going to use this which is i'm not quite sure what it is some sort of filing thing from ikea I got that for 50p in a charity shop. And we're going to use some gorgeous ribbons. Look at this. I just think it's so beautiful. And um, I've got this one and they're all wired. And this ribbon is actually very wiry all the way. You can see it holds its position. So we'll be using those. And I've also got this beautiful little fairy or angel, or she's a girl playing. I think it's supposed to be a violin, but it looks like a banjo. 40p from the charity shop and she's absolutely gorgeous there's glitter everywhere from the different ribbon the first thing i need to do is to remove this because we don't want this on we need to take it off and that will come in very useful for another project so i'll put that safely away with the black screws that are the perfect match so as you can see, there's a little bit of difference in the colour of the wood and some little holes, but that's not a problem because for this craft, these are going to be covered. You can fill these in with spackle if you've got something similar, but we'll be fine with it as it is. So even though this looks clean, I'm going to give it a bit of a rub over and look at that. It certainly wasn't clean, so it's always worth you doing this. Now, one of the things you may want to do, which would make it essential to rub this over, is to paint this white but i'm not going to paint it white because i love the fact that this is going to be a very white christmas display but with the natural wood behind it i think it's just going to look perfect now i'm going to take this yarn and i'm going to wrap it around these two bars now i could paint them but i'm not sure whether at some point in the future i'll be repurposing this and i may want the black bars then so i'm going to use this cover them up and they look quite christmasy because it's quite a snowy effect with being so fluffy It's going to be a fuss to work with quite a big ball like that, so I'm just going to wind a little bit off like that, and it'll be so much easier to work with. I'm trying to be over generous with my guess at how much it's going to take, so I don't have to join it. I start by applying a tiny bit of hot glue to the back so that you can't see where I start, and then just wrap it round and around and around with the odd little dot of hot glue just to keep everything together. Have I got the messiest glue gun on YouTube? Have you seen anybody with a worse glue gun than mine? Everything seems to stick to it. So now I'm going to finish up this one leg and then do the other one. So they're now looking much more winter wonderland, icy palace to me. I'm going to measure the back, which is seven inches across. And then I'm going to get my trusty placemat that I've used for several things. As you can see, I'm undoing the outside and you get lots and lots of this braid off it. And I want to make a circle about six inches across. So about there, and I'm going to glue, pop some glue on to hold it in place. And then go all the way around again. As this is quite springy, you really need to be holding it for quite a few seconds to let the glue cool, otherwise it'll just open back up. I'm going to use this lace that I took off an Easter bunny. It was from the pound shop, which is like dollar stores in America. I thought I could use it for later on, so now I'm going to use it for something for Christmas. Now I'm going to cover the hoop with the tinsel. I'm going to use these Christmas lights 
to wrap this circle but it'll turn on by turning on the lights first you know where you're putting the lights because otherwise you could end up with them not very evenly spaced I'm going to tie a piece of ribbon to the top which will hold the wire in place and give us something to hang it from don't tie this too tight in case you cramp the wire too much using hot glue being very careful not to get it on the wires I'm going to pop it on the back of the little piece of ribbon there and then pop that into place centrally at the top I got these from the pound shop you can get them pretty much from any pound shop dollar store dollar tree anywhere like that 18 in a pack I'm going to use three different ones. I tie the little threads onto the little baubles and then attach those to the ring. With a bit of hot glue, I attach the ring to the case. This wire will be around the back eventually and you won't see it. I'm going to cut out some mountain shapes and then cover them in PVA glue. And now the fun part. Well, I was going to put on this little bow and I've decided I don't like it I was trying to go for a smaller one the ribbon is far too fat for it it didn't work so I taken it back off you didn't see me put it on but I did put it all on I'm taking it back off and now I'm going to add a bigger floofier bow so I've got the tails here that have still got some floral stuck to them <laughs> so I left them on I'm just going to glue that in place with my glue gun So that was the original bow and I didn't like it so I've now made this bow. It'll need a little bit more floofing when I finished but I'm going to just glue it onto the top of the lantern see if I can show you and then we'll go up and have a look what this looks like on the display. No I can't show you because it actually is higher than my camera so I'm just going to pop some glue on lots of it. I'd rather be sure it's going to stick. And then pick the nicest side, which I think is that side. And just hold it in place. Now let's see what this huge bow on the lantern looks like up on my display. project I'm going to use this old decorative I think it's supposed to be a bird cage the handle snapped off the top it cost me 50p in a French brocant with this project it is very adaptable you can make it as quick or as slow as you like you can add lots of detail or not I am going to put some white wax on this because the color theme is going to be black and white so I don't want to put a darker wax on it but I don't want to paint it white either I just want to lighten it a little bit Let's give it a quick going over with some wax and then we'd be ready to carry on you may be worried you're not going to be able to find a lantern like this in a thrift store or a charity shop or even somewhere like dollar tree or hobby lobby but that doesn't matter because you'll get something similar and then you can just adapt your idea to fit to it i'm going to use a remote control 
candle for this because I'm going to put this in the middle and I don't want to have to keep picking it up and pulling it out of the display to turn it on and off on the bottom. But if you're going to do this, first thing to do before you put it in, check it works because if it needs new batteries, it will be really frustrating. I'm also not going to glue too much in place so that at any point you need to replace the batteries, you can just pull it out and that way then you can also change the decor for some summer decor too. This has got like little marks as if a candle's been dripping but they're going to get a little bit scratched on the way in because they're just too fat to go through. There we go. Now this is going to be difficult to show you. Again, it's one of those projects I can't do lying down because otherwise the candle's going to move. The theme for this is going to be black, white and silver and I've got these which came off one pick like this. It's a very reasonable way of buying flowers. I got these in the car boot sale, so I got them very cheaply, or it was a charity shop, somewhere like that. I very, really pay a lot. And what I'm going to do is push some of these leaves up a little further because I don't need all that length. And then chop them down to a more manageable size, but not too short, otherwise you can't get them to stay in place. So when you put these in, don't lay them on top, otherwise you'll see all the stalks. Layer the one underneath the last one, like that. And then pop them all the way around the lantern, just sticking out of the lantern occasionally. Well, I've decided to add more florals, so I'm just going to chop these off and use these. I do love a bit of sumptuousness. Can't beat a bit of sumptuousness. I'm leaving the pick longer on these ones because they've got further to travel. Oh yes, that's looking very sumptuous. I know you can't see it, but it is. <laughs> now this cage has got a broken handle on the top and I do have this bird. And I was going to put the bird in the cage because that's traditional, but I'm not a fan of cage birds. So I am going to put my bird on top of the cage because he doesn't have to be in a cage. There's a hole there. I got this from a French brocon for 50 cents for two, I think it was. And it's got this little hole where it was fixed to a garniture or something like that. And that hole happens to be the right size to poke onto this broken handle. So I'm going to break out lots of hot glue. I've got this bow I got from the range and I'm just going to pop this here. To just I love a bow, any excuse, but I don't want to overdo the bows on this. Getting this to stay at the right angle could be a challenge, but we'll find out. just clean some of the glitter up while I'm holding this in place to dry firmly. I'll leave the link for my little ladybird vacuum down in the description below because I find this so useful. And just in case you fancy buying one. Yep, I think that's firmly stuck. So now, I don't know if I can tip it up to show you. Let's have a look. We'll go from the back there and press the on button. Everything's working. So let's see what this looks like up on my display. seems the perfect opportunity to use this other storage whatever tray it is that I got from the charity shop for 50p originally from Ikea and this time I'm going to use some Christmas paper on this so I'm going to get my Aileen's tacky glue out I need a lot so I'm going to unscrew it and do it like that because it takes forever to come out otherwise And then pop this onto the back of the what are we going to call it? 
call it the frame again. Run down with the bone folder just to make sure there are no bubbles. Oh, that's looking very festive already, isn't it? I've got a teddy bear. I'm going to cut his tag off. Like that. And then this teddy bear is going to get glued in place to my little frame. With, surprise, surprise, more hot glue. Just one dollop on his bottom has done the trick. I've got this, which is part of an old flower pick, and I'm going to attach some twine to this to make it look a bit like a rope. And then you want one of these. I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut off the little hanger from the bauble. Now I glue the end of this into the bauble. Any ideas what it is yet? Hmm. But if we turn it that way, we've got a balloon. Now if I just glue this to Teddy's hand, it's going to flop. So I'm going to glue it to the top of the frame in just the right place so it looks like Teddy's holding it. And then I'll put it in Teddy's hand. So decide where I want it to be, which is about there. And then leave it in place. And now glue Teddy's hand to make it look as if he really is holding the balloon. I think somebody should invent an instant hot glue cool down gun that you could just go psh squirt some frozen cold air at the glue and then it would set really quickly. I would, it's just I'm not very really technically minded. Now I'm going to glue this little tartan bow onto the bear, under his chin, like that. And to tie in the balloon to the bear, I'm going to add one to the bottom of the balloon too, like that. Now this is pretty much finished. If you want to, you can put a decorative edge down the side. I'm liking the simplicity of this, so I'm thinking I'm probably not going to. I've got this little candle, and so Bear becomes a lantern and gives him a little bit of light of his own as well. I'm going to just use that to stand on the front there. And then you can just pick it up, turn it on and off as necessary. But we need something on the top. Now I think it's got to be a bow, and I think it's got to be a tartan bow. So now I'm going to measure the top of this lid, and go slightly longer, and then turn back. And then slightly longer and turn back. And then I can do the rest down on my work surface. Now if you're going to be using a lot of ribbon like this, pop your ribbon roll on the floor otherwise it'll just keep curling and drive you bananas. Now I'm going to come in about an inch shorter on that side and across to this side and then turn in about an inch shorter on this side as well. Which is about there-ish. You haven't got to be too accurate, don't panic. And then you're going to do the same thing again. Go in about an inch shorter that's about ish. That's and then an inch shorter on this edge too. Chop this off at over the halfway mark and then what I like to do is to turn this one back so the the end is hidden right inside the bowl. worry about being superbly accurate just enjoy what it is you're making it's much more fun that way I'm just going to find the halfway mark I don't want to do this too tightly and then you've got this and now it's time to do some floofing so we floof all three loops like that it looks so effective when you do this and it's so easy you will need wired ribbon this won't work if you don't use wired ribbon and the reason why we went slightly bigger than the top of the frame is because you do use up some of the length when you actually round this up to the top 
So that's roughly it. I'm not going to worry too much because I'm going to get it squashed now when I actually put it on top of the frame and then have to refluff it. Now we need some tails. You've got to have some tails on a bow. And I'm going for about that long, I think. And decide how many tails you want. And are you going to do a contrasting tail too? Turn that round that way. It looks like that now, but we could put on something like this. Make an additional tail, or will that take away from the tartan look? I think it may lift the tartan look. I'm not sure. Let's have a look what red looks like. Oh, yes, I think red is going to be a good idea. So let's chop the red. And then get the centre of both pieces of tail. And then bring your pipe cleaner. Bring your bow and pipe cleaner down and make sure the red is at the top and give it another twist. Now we can cut the pipe cleaner off shorter because we don't need that. As you can see, my bow is really getting squished, but that's not a problem. That's why I didn't fuss too much when I started. So now let's have a look at the length and cut your tails to the length you want. And also, if you fancy, dovetail them. I like to dovetail them. Now I'm going to glue my bow to the top of the frame. No surprises there. On he goes. And again, don't worry that it's squashed. That's not a problem. If you want your loops to be absolutely perfect, you can always find some hair curlers and put them to go around those. But I don't mind that much. I like my tails hanging over the corner there, but you could, if you put them on the front, you'll hide Teddy. And if you put them too far to the side, you won't see them. So I've got them coming over the corners and it also hides the little black pieces. I think I'll pop a little bit of glue on there and then I know it'll permanently hide those black bits. As a little finishing touch, I'm going to put some hot glue onto this little piece of Christmas foliage. Pop it there. It's a little bit of a Christmas garland I had. And then glue on a couple of Christmas berries. This should be easier to see when you're looking front on. I've decided to put a little bit of ribbon, I've got this here, right the way around the bottom of the frame, just to lift it a little bit and so there's a clear distinction between the bottom of the, the actual lantern and the tabletop. So that's a very wonky view for you. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. I started filming and forgot to turn the camera on so we are <laughs> starting to film now I took the light fitting out oh it was a disaster to get out it was all just non-return bungs and things so I had to just break it to pieces to get it out I then given it a very very light sanding and put a little bit of dark finishing wax on it just to give it that more aged look because even though it looked very traditional it wasn't it was probably bought yesterday I've got a candle to go on the top, but first of all, we need to decorate this using some of these. I've got lots of little wooden Christmas ornaments and I'm going to pop them all around the bottom. I think that'll look really cute. But then now this is a bit of a dip here. So if I put things on in the dip, they're all going to be wonky. So I'm going to glue their heads where they touch to the fat bit, if you see what I mean. And that way then they'll be as level as I want them to be. Now I'm not going to use him because I've just noticed he's harmless enough, <laughs> but He's got bits missing. I got this box of bits and pieces. I think these were in the charity shop for 50p. I know I wouldn't have paid a lot because I buy my Christmas items out of season 
and you get them so much cheaper. See where you need to pop the glue. It's going to be very difficult to not over glue this and have glue bulging out everywhere. Especially me because I am notorious for making a terrible mess with my hot glue. It is difficult to get the fine line between using too much glue and not putting enough on and they fall back off. But I think they're pretty firm on there now. It looks a bit plain still, so I'm going to dress it up a little bit now. First of all, I need to cover this hole. So I'm going to stick something on the front there. And I think that little tartan bowl will look lovely. And the hole is instantly gone. Now I'm covering the edge of my candle with a little bit of this stiffer ribbon. It's very pretty and sparkly. And now when I pop it over the top of the candlestick, it just looks so much better. This is actually the right length to stick out a little bit on the bottom. So when I put it onto the candle holder, it covers this ugly lip. And look at that. I'm going to stick a simple ready-made bow on this side too. And that way then, whichever way you look at it, you can see the bow. So you can make this as fancy, or as sparkly, or as plain as you like. I just think it's lovely and a great way of using up if you've got a lot of these little wooden ornaments and an old tatty candlestick. If I turn the light on. Oh, isn't that pretty? It's lovely from that side. Right, let's go see what this looks like up on my display. I got this jar from the charity shop for 30p, and so I'm going to use this for my craft. Give it a bit of a wipe over, take the cork out, and then get some tissue paper. Now this one's quite a stiff tissue paper, but any tissue paper is good. Scrunch it up, and that's what we're looking for, really scrunchy effect. And also, tear it into smaller, more manageable pieces. Oh, isn't that fun? Great for taking out your frustrations at the end of a day. I've got these words and they say Christmas and magic and I'm going to stick these. They're made with a, a cricket or cricket sort of thing. If you can get yourself a waterproof black pen, you could write it on with that instead. And then add a little fairy. So this now says Christmas magic, but after all that hard work, we're going to take up some watered down PVA glue and we're going to glue this scrunched up tissue paper over the top of the words and right the way around the jar. Don't panic, this isn't as crazy as it looks. You can make this as rippled and ruffled or as flat as you like i'm going for more of a ripple ruffled rimpled whatever the word would be crinkled look you have to be very careful when this tissue paper is wet because it will tear so easily you can use any tissue paper for this that you want but just make sure that you can see light to it if you want to use like a pale pink or something to go with your deco then that'll be fine so that will take a while to dry because you've used so much glue on it just so as not to tear the paper. So while that's drying, I'm going to take the lid and we're just going to put a little bit of a decoration on the top. So now I'm just adding a few little winter leaves and I've got some beautiful pink glistening berries 
It's not the traditional colour you would tie in with Christmas, pink, but it's very fashionable and I just think it's pretty and fairy-like. In the ideal world, your jar will now be dry. Mine isn't because I'm rushing, because I got a few things to film this morning. So now we say it's Christmas magic on the glass, but it's not really full of Christmas magic, is it? So we better add some. I've got a string of fairy lights, battery operated, and I'm going to pop them in. These you can get from the pound shop or the dollar store or Hobby Lobby, just about anywhere, really, Hobby Craft. I think I got these from Amazon. Yep, I got these ones from Amazon. I had like 10 in a pack. And they're supposed to go in a bottle, but they're very useful because they've only got a very small switch on them. If I turn the light on, pop that in, pop the lid on, very carefully because the tissue is still wet and delicate, I've got a jar full of fairy magic. So let's have a look what this looks like up on the display and when it's dry. enjoyed these crafts and I'll put a little playlist over there and you'll be able to see other Christmas things that I've made in July and at Christmas time and get your creative juices flowing ready to make your Christmas decorations, your Christmas gifts, your Christmas cards. I'll see you all next time but until then don't forget have fun. Bye!